What is up you guys? In the second lecture of numerical analysis and methods, we're going to talk about a very well known and simplistic method called the bisection method. It's one of the most basic methods. We'll also see a MATLAB implementation of bisection method and how it's applied in order to estimate or extract the roots of those different functions. So without further ado, let's get started. So again, like in the previous lecture, our main goal here is to find the point x that satisfies f of x equal to zero, okay? Let's call it um, x star as the optimal point, right? So this is our main goal, as simple as that. As we said in the previous lecture, sometimes this is impossible due to, you know, computations and divisions and stuff that are not. If you want to get stuff implemented on a computer, you need computer-friendly methods that are numerically fast and stable at the same time. So bisection method is one of those methods, right? One, it's very well known because one, it's easy to understand, very simple. And two, it requires minimal conditions on the function f itself. So the only requirement we're going to utilize, we're going to impose on f is that if we're in 1D, if this is x, this is f, right? The only condition we're going to, you know, force on f is the fact that, so we're going to assume, let's say this is f of a, okay? And I don't know, let's say this guy is f of b. And if f is continuous, then it should be joining a to b as such. So we're going to assume that f of a and f of b switch signs as the picture depicts. Um, this is a valid assumption because if your function admits a root, let's call it x star, as per this equation, then it has to cross the x-axis somewhere. In other words, in an interval containing this root, fa and fb are switching signs. That is, fa times fb um, is negative. So this sign is negative. Because, you know, I could have drawn this the other way, for example. Another way of uh, describing this requirement is that my f of a lies here, for example, and my f of b is here. And let's say my f looks something like this, right? This is another um, example that describes our requirement sine f a times f b is negative. That means f a and f b switch signs, in other words, okay? Uh, this is a mathematical requirement uh, that is implicitly saying our root is between A and B, okay? This is the one and only requirement that we are utilizing to, you know, get the bisection method going. And what does the bisection method say? Well, let me open another, um, let's say, okay, so again, I've got my A here, my B here. And let's say my FAB looks something like this. Actually, let me do this, okay? So this is F of A and this guy is F of B, okay? This is F of X and this is X. Right, so the bisection method, also known as dictionary search, okay? Um, tells you dissect your problem into halves. So your root is contained either left or right to every midpoint. So it's like a recursive function, okay? It's a recursive method that the exact same problem is contained within, within its subproblems. So what I mean by that is that, okay, let's say I have A and B, I have this information, and I know what F looks like. So we're not in a black box optimization problem, no. We know what F is, right? So we know F, we know A, we know B, and we're trying to estimate our good old friend X star, okay? This is what we're trying to get. So bisection method tells you, okay, we know A, we know B, well, why not start by the midpoint? X zero is A plus B over two. Okay, we start here, and then what do we do once we have the midpoint? We evaluate F at that point. So if this is my midpoint x0, I evaluate f of x0. So from x0, get f of x0, okay? This is your first step. Okay, we have x0 and we have f of x0. Now, the question is, is my f of x0 
uh, positive or negative? That's the second question. Why am I asking that? Well, I want to see if it agrees or it opposes the sign of F of A or F of B. We need, we care about the opposite so that we know where X zero lies, if that makes sense. So if F of X, in our case, F of X zero, so this is step number one. Step number two would be find whether F of A or F of B opposes F of X zero. In our case, we have that F of X zero times F of A is negative. So that means that we are sure that our X zero lies in interval A, X zero, not X zero B. So here it's like we, you know, resolved half the problem. That makes sense. So at each iteration, we're shrinking down the problem by a factor of half. So now instead of your B being as far as here, it's now here. Okay. You keep repeating this process. So now you replace X zero by B. So now three would be your B is now X zero and repeat. You repeat and repeat and repeat until your XK now at the kth iteration, because X zero zero denotes the first iteration. You'd repeat until XK barely moves. So that in other words, XK minus XK minus one is very small. And this very small epsilon is an input usually to the numerical algorithm. It's called the tolerance. So what tolerance are you able to handle? Is it one, 10 power minus three, 10 power minus four? What is it that you accept? It depends on the application. It depends on the complexity. Okay. Um, it's as simple as that. Another thing that is worth noting is that the bisection method, it has a linear speed. It's simple, but it's really slow. That's what uh, you need to keep in mind. Okay. So now we know that, um, how it works. Let's see how to implement this on, for example, MATLAB. Okay. So I'm on MATLAB right now. I'm in a folder called numerical methods. So now let me create a function called my, I don't know, main. Okay. And another function called bisection. Simple as that. So let me start with the bisection and I'll be using it over and over again. It's reusable. I'm going to be using it over and over again to compute roots of different functions, see how it behaves. And yeah, so that's why I'm going to begin with the bisection method. So as we said during the lecture, our bisection method is going to, um, I don't know, take F the function handle. So F of X, the interval a B, the initial interval. And in our case, just for sake of simplicity, I'm going to give it the number of iterations. You can give it the tolerance. If you give it the tolerance, you're going to naturally embed a while loop until the condition, this condition, X K minus X K minus one less than epsilon until this is satisfied, you break the loop. Okay. I'm going to do something simple, which is a for loop. Okay. A for loop on the number of iterations, just for sake of demonstration of the algorithm, right? Let's put a description over here. Um, so that if we come in again and take a look at this function, we know what we're talking about, right? So the input is F that is the input function. Um, we are working with, okay. Second of all, um, we give a, what is a, a is the, um, the left limit of the interval a B, right. And B would be the same exact thing, but now the right limit of the interval a B, right. Last but not least, we have number of iterations that stands for, um, let me align stuff. I'm an alignment freak. So, um, I like stuff well aligned. Um, okay. Um, N iter stands for the number of iterations of the bisection method, right? Okay. So this is the inputs. Now, what about the output? Okay. The output, what are we expected to return? Well, we're expected to return 
nothing other than x star, the estimate, the final estimate or the final iteration of the bisection method. Um, for my case, just for sake of um, explanation, because I'm, I'm, I'm explaining what the bisection method is, I'm going to save. So this guy would be a vector giving the root at each iteration. That means in the kth element, we're going to find xk, the kth iteration value of the bisection method. We're also going to output the error. So the error is a vector. This guy is the error function because, you know, what are we trying to do at the end of the day? We're trying to find f of x equal to zero. So this error would be the function evaluated at f of x k. This would give us an idea of how good of an estimation we're doing. At the end of the day, we're trying to null f, f of x. Okay, so is a vector. We're going to see at each iteration the error. It's a vector giving giving the error at each iteration. Okay, so in other words, it's f of x k. or absolute value of fxk, whatever you define as an error, right? Okay, um, so yeah, this is a description and don't forget to output uh, your outputs. So this is how the algorithm should look like. Um, okay, if we go here, type help by section, bam. You get the description that we just wrote here. That's cool. <laughs> Because you know you can do the same thing for MATLAB functions such as help max. You get all this description because MATLAB did the same exact thing right here. It inserted a description of its algorithm right here. How cool is that? Okay, um, back to bisection. Um, so um, we're going to do a condition first. What if the user entered FAB where uh, AB where F of A and F of B have the same sign? Well, we're going to, you know, state this as a condition saying, hey, if you inputted both AB where FA, FB, where FA and FB do not oppose, this is the only requirement of the bisection method. If this is the case, then you display or you give an error saying actually it's not an error because the poor user didn't do anything wrong so we'll warn him it's a warning saying hey you did not respect the bisection method condition and you know what this condition has a name it's called the mvt it's called the mean value theorem mean value theorem because if you go to Wikipedia, you check mean value theorem, it tells you something like, um, in order for a root to lie within AB, FA and FB should oppose signs. On top of that, it should be continuous and other types of requirements. So the mean value theorem should be satisfied. Okay. Um, okay. So in other words, we're not going to run the bisection method because it doesn't make sense if you run it with a million iterations you're not going to con you're not going anywhere with this uh, given that FAFB do not oppose signs right okay now let's assume they oppose signs we're here right so the first thing we said is that we take the midpoint okay take the midpoint of AB this guy is going to be x0 so the first element in our vector x how do we compute the midpoint? Well, it's a plus b over two. Simple as that, right? Then to output the error, to, to remain coherent, we compute the error of the first or at the first iteration, okay? The error in this case would be f or absolute value of f of x1 so here as we see we're just initializing stuff now we need to write a loop right for n equal to 2 because this is the first iteration this guy is the first iteration so from 2 till n iter we're going to do the same exact process right this is one implementation just for sake of you know demonstration i'm just showing you how this works you can also get the same thing implemented using a recursive function okay 
So now the job is to see whether x1 is going to be our next a or next b. And how do we do that? Well, if f of a times f of x n minus 1, which in this at n equal 2 would be x of 1, which is the midpoint, right? Okay. If this guy is negative, means that our new interval, this guy means that our new interval would be a x n minus 1. Else it will be, I'm going to copy paste this message right over here. And this time would be if f a and x n minus 1 are, is not negative, which means it's positive or non-negative, means that f b times f x n minus 1 is negative. We're sure of that. So in that case, our new interval would be x n minus 1 and b. Okay, so in that case, we're going to fill those together because they follow the same logic. So in, in, in the first case, if this is our new interval means my B is Xn minus one, right? We're replacing the role of B by Xn minus one. Else it's going to be A that replaces Xn minus one. Okay. Okay, well, so far so good. We just you know, with this step, we just said what our new AB interval is. Now we, now that we have it, we're ready to compute its midpoint. That is A plus B over two again, right? And evaluate the error as well, which is as well, which is the absolute value of F of X of N. And that's it. We're done. That's the bisection method. Very simple, but linear conversions. If you want a lecture on how to see conversions, how to test it on MATLAB before having to prove it, because this has a formal proof of why it has a linear convergence. It has to do with the, you know, with the limit of XK minus X star over XK minus one minus X star. Um, in absolute value, you take that limit. This tells you the rate of convergence, whether it's linear, quad quadratic, cubic, and so forth. Okay, so now we have the function. We're ready to use it in our main, right? So in the main, say this is our function main. In the main, um, let's define different functions to work with, okay? So let's say I have some given functions that we create. Let's say my first function is, I don't know, x cubed minus 2x minus 5, something like that. Let's do another function which is contains exponentials because we're smart. <laughs> so uh, e, e to the power minus x minus x, okay, minus x, okay. Let's, let's create another function that is... I don't know, x sine x minus one, right? right? And our last function that is cubic, right? That is, I don't know, x cubed minus three x squared plus three x minus one, right? Okay, okay. Now, um, of course, we're going to use the bisection method to compute the roots, but as a test, um, we're going to see how good of an estimation we're doing. We're going to use a library routine to know what the roots are in advance. So x1 would be the root of f1. I'm going to use MATLAB's fsolve for that purpose as such. And likewise, x2 would be the root of f2, x3 of f3, and x4 of f4. Okay. Now, all I have to do is solve using bisection method. Well, for that, let, let us copy paste the function as such. We know f, a, b, um, let's say my a, my b are, I don't know, 0, 10 or 0, 5. This guy outputs x one bisection and likewise error one bisection because we're going to 
in future lectures, we're going to see other methods. So most probably we're going to revisit main and build up on top of main. That is, we're going to, I don't know, if we decide in the next lecture, we're going to talk about, I don't know, Newton or secant methods. Um, we're going to revisit this main and add similar functions beneath um, this, call it, I don't know, Newton and call this guy here error Newton and so forth. But for now, since we're focusing on bisection method, I'll just keep um, the bisection um, alias over here. Um, okay, we're going to do the same thing with, so this is F1, this is F2, 2, 2. I'm just going to repeat this thing for 3 and 4. So 3, 4, 3, 4. I just don't want to spend time writing because I'm sure this is going nowhere. Uh, I mean, I don't need to rewrite this multiple times. Okay, and now we have n iterations. Let me set it to 20 iterations. Okay. Okay, let's run to make sure that we have no errors. We do have an error saying output argument x and maybe others not assigned during. So this is happening only for F3. So it works for F1, it works for F2, only for F3. Well, let's try reducing the size checking if something's going ah uh, it solves it so i think it's because of the interval length for this particular function right okay well i'm going to open a figure so now it comes the plotting i'm going to open a figure that contains four subplots each for its associated function so subplot two two one is going to be for the first function so we're going to plot this guy let's say in red and hold on so that we can plot the true root x1 so for that plot x1 times ones why am i multiplying with a vector of ones is because um, i want to see the line um being um aligned on the true value x1 for that, I'll use a, a green dashed line indicating the true root with a line width of two. We'll call the X label iteration number K or N, whatever you want, and the Y label our X of K. Okay, legend. First one would be using bisection and the second one would be the library routine. And I'll insert some grids. Let me let me run this to see what we get so this is what we get so what i have in mind is that over here i'll do the same thing for f2 over here f3 and f4 right so as you can see we're converging after I don't know, maybe 10 iterations we're good we're at we're almost at the root 2.095 so yeah um Okay, let me insert the title here so that we dis differentiate between the functions. So title solving f1 of x, which is equal to this guy right here. And there you go. Okay, now I'm just going to copy paste this because really nothing changes. Um, I'm going to copy this um, three more times. So one, two, three. This guy is two, this guy is three, and this guy is four, okay? This guy is two, two. This guy is three, three. Now you might be looking at me and saying, what am I doing, okay? Um, right here, the only thing that's changing is just the index one, two, three, four, that is for corresponding to its um, appropriate function, f1, f2, f3, and f4. So for that, I only need to change the, the, the indices, right? the indices and the title, of course, F2, F3, F4, and copy paste the right function. So over here, I've got exponential E minus X for F2, right? Over here, I've got X sine X minus one for F3. Okay. And last but not least for F4, I have all this guy right here. Right, so let me run this. 
and I see multiple figures at the same time. You know why? We did a very big mistake because at each time I'm opening a figure. No, we should have one figure only. And for each plot, we open a subplot. So running this, there you go. Converging in each and every case. Okay. As you can see, it wiggles around the right value because one time it switches sign, then switches sign and so forth over here as well. And there you go. So this is really how you implement by section on MATLAB. This is one possible implementation. Another one could be recursive. And yeah, this is how you get the job done on MATLAB. So in this lecture, really all we did was introduce you to the bisection method, what it is, very simplistic explanation through visual examples, um, stating the one and only requirement that is the interval should evaluate the function at opposing signs. So the, in other words, if you choose to start with an interval AB, just make sure that FA times FB is negative. We gave an intuitive example on why it works. Um, the thing to take away here is that at each iteration, the problem cuts down into half. That is, we're ruling out half the values within the segment. Now, topologists will have a problem following up with what I'm saying because you can't say half when you have infinitely many values or infinite number of values in AB, but this, the, the, the length of the interval, let's put it that way, shrinks down into half at each iteration. So while doing that over and over again, your interval is going to shrink down so small that the difference between A and B is going to be very small. And the thing that dictates how small it is, is the distance between XK and XK minus one, which is an absolute value the tolerance of your bisection method. Last but not least, we showed you how to implement bisection on MATLAB through a non-recursive way. If you care about the recursive version, please let me know down in the comment section below. Um, and we've seen an example on four different functions and that convergence is guaranteed for all of those functions, mainly because our initial condition a b is satisfied so i hope you enjoyed this lecture if you did please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you have any questions whatsoever kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below i'll make sure i'll get to it as soon as possible also consider joining our so we initially started perks and memberships on this channel so if you would like to support the channel um, instead of heading to Patreon, you, you could also support the channel over here on YouTube. So that's it for this one. And I hope I'll see you in the next lecture.